Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, and uh, today's Wednesday. We've got a few cool things to talk about. Uh, one thing, I got an email from a, a friend of the show who does restorations himself. His name is Phil Nace. He's from New Jersey, and uh, Phil sent me a, I got to tell you, he uh, when I first opened this email, he said, I got something, I know you like to use a, a stick instead of a platen. But he says, I got something that, that he designed this uh, fantastic removable platen for the for the 1x30 sanders we use. Let me show you. First, I'm going to uh, show you a picture. Let me put it in here. Now, here's some of the pictures that Phil sent to me. And as you can see, you can see right away what a simple and genius design this is. And the beauty is you could take it on and off while the belt sand is running. So how great is that? I wrote back to Phil. I said, Phil, uh, we got to try this out. So I'm going to make it now. Uh, I've never tried it before. It just looks fantastic. So let's get the uh, let's find a scrap of two by four and a one by three and put this thing now, together. For those of you unfamiliar, this is the standard one by thirty. Uh, it's made by a few different manufacturers. This one's a Grizzly, but the Harbor Freight makes them. It's probably all made by the same factory in China. And what they are, it's a, it's a three wheel um, belt sander. It uses a one inch by thirty inch long belt. And uh, very economical, fantastic. I mean, I must have a few a few hours on this machine. I mean, this thing is, uh, I think it's almost worn out, actually. I probably need another one. But when you first get it, there's a little steel plate here that goes in these two little holes, and it comes up to about here. Just a steel with a little L at the bottom, and that's called a platen. And what that does is the belt rests against that plate, and when you have any kind of work that you're putting against, if you're using... Let's say you wanted to sand the top of this. When you press this against here, the, the platen holds it flat and gives you a flat surface. For a lot, of, if you wanted to do a round surface, you really don't want that flat. So I take it off here and I always use a, uh, a stick in the background like this to uh, to manipulate the belt and get it into the curves and things like that. That's the way. Now I've been another doing thing it. that comes on uh, the belt sander is a plastic cover that covers up everything, and which is great if you're going to do dust collection, like if you're doing wood or things like that, because it has a little dust port. But for what we use, a lot of times it just gets in the way, you know, because every time it's held on here, you got to take the screw off and then pop it off, and you know when we want to do a belt change. Uh, basically, you just want to be able to pull the belt off like that and then take another belt and put it on like that, you know, so it takes, you know, a couple. So whereas taking that shield off is just, it's annoying. So, but if you're going to use dust collection, that shield does come now, in as hand. nice as this stick works, and I, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm pretty proficient at it now because I've been doing it for a while, but uh, a lot of times you do want a flat area here, but, you know, you're not going to screw on that platen that came with the machine. It just takes too long. Phil's idea is genius. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a 2x4, like his design calls for. And you can see when you look over here, these little lips here, uh, the edges of the metal, is away from the belt. So uh, when he puts that other, it slaps in here. And I'll show you when we're putting it together. Let's get the wood. Okay, every once in a while when I go to Home Depot or something, I'll look at the 2x4s. Because they every once in a while they come across, and you'll see this here. See, that's called a burrow. And it's this type of 2x4. It comes, it's, it's kiln dried. And it's usually very straight grain. Look how straight that grain is, huh? It's just beautiful. And I buy these because you can you can use these for any kind of project you want. They, they, it's just a beautiful piece of, uh, of wood. But what we're going to do is we're going to take it here like this, place it on the bottom, move it up to the belt here. We have the belt just laying here. And then we're going to take a pencil and scribe just under the, the over here on the edge where that piece of metal is down here. We're going to scribe here like this. And then we're going to cut that with a saw. Now here you see we cut the wood just in. And now I cut it a little bit proud. When I say proud, a little bit over. Uh, because you don't want it to be short. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to push this in here now. And you see you want here. You can always sand this down to get a good fit. But you want this to press. If it's there's a gap between there, you really don't want it. But you want it to press. And you don't want it to be too tight that it restricts the belt. So... You know, we're just going to give a quick sanding just to make sure that, you know, we want this to be close, but, uh, you know, not that there's a gap between it. And then we will put that uh, piece of two by a one by two over here just to hold it kind of steady and to stop it from uh, from this from moving around. Here we go. We chamfered all the edges here anywhere that's going to go on here. And now when you press this in, when it pushes in here like this, now it, when it presses up against the back here, 
this angle, you can see the belt is just just in front of the platen. It's not uh, pressing hard against it. It's right in front, and uh, that's just the way you want it to be. There's no restriction. Now, for the uh, instead of the one by three, I just happen to have a piece of this uh, old plywood because the the more surface you have holding here, I think the better it is for. So I'm going to put this just like this, and you can see how nice and solid that makes that piece. And uh, and now we're going to glue and screw this together and give okay, it a Okay, we marked the three areas we're going to put the screws in. We're going to countersink it. Uh, I bought this countersink when I was 15 years old, and uh, it has served me well. I'll never. This is one of my favorite tools. Okay, so we're going to countersink and then uh, put the three screws in. Okay, we are done. Here's the uh, the little platen that we made. Look how this nicely that slips in there and in and out. One, two, three, when you want to use it. It's nice and solid against. It's got all these points that it's touching against. It can't go anywhere. And uh, let's try it out. Boy, that is some beautiful invention there, Phil. Unbelievable. Just a perfect uh, accessory to the 1x30. Thanks so much. Let's see what else we got Man, today. that was really a fun project. Okay, next up, uh, you know, a lot of people say with me, with my antiques, you know, and stuff that I, I collect a lot of old stuff. But you know what else I collect? I collect what I call future antiques. If I see something that I like and I say, wow, you know, years from now, that's probably going to be you know, thought of as uh, uh, an unusual or interesting item, uh, I'll pick it up now and, and, and stash it away. Because, you know, when you get to my age, you know, 10, 20 years goes by like unbelievable. I mean, I got stuff that I, I thought I bought a little while ago, and it turns out it was 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Let's check out some future antiques. Okay, first up, you know, I, I like padlocks and things like that. And, you know, if I see something that I, I think it will be nice years from now, I, I throw it. I won't even take this out of the package. I'll just grab it like this and throw it in the collective bin. And uh, what I liked about this is it has a uh, magnification here. And it has a little rubber grip wheel, you know, and it's a it's a mass candy apple red, you know. So I said, okay, for a few dollars, I'll throw it in the bin. But here's what really what I like the most about it is that the honesty in their package description. Now, here is their rating from 1 to 10 on how secure this lock is. And they gave this a 3 from the factory. So I said, how great is that? That a, a lock company is going to say, you know what? We're going to give this a 3. I mean, most most lock companies would say at least give it a 5 or 6 or passing, right? Here they say, no, 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 this is a 3. Uh, this is just above a piece of string with a knot in it. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool. So this will go into the uh, okay, collective. You know, I, I like knives and stuff like that. So when I find an interesting or unusual knife, you know, here is a, uh, this is based off a, a, like a paratrooper design knife. But you see, it looks like a square piece of steel. But when you open it this way and then turn it this way, uh, the handle, it becomes the handle. And then you have your knife here and it's, it's, fairly secure you know it's a it's probably a usa design but it's you know it's made overseas and how interesting is that you know it closes one way closes the other this is a glass breaker that you can use to break through uh you know a glass if you get stuck but i don't know i i this is something i thought was interesting and uh you know how it opens up becomes secure and you know if this blade was just a little bit shorter this would be legal in new york because of uh the fact that it's not like a gravity knife or anything, but pretty interesting, huh? I like this, so this will go into the uh, future antique box. Okay, now, lastly, we have this uh, this M Tech, and this is you know a lot of these are, are knives are designed in the USA, but they're made overseas. I just like this design, and I'll show you why. First of all, uh, look at the beautiful candy apple orange aluminum anodized scales, right? I like that. It's got the gold accent around it. This is a gold, you know, like a gold plating. It's a, uh, you know, it's a quick spring assist. So when you do that, it opens right up. It's got the cleaver type, which is like a sheep's, a modified sheep foot design, but it's a cleaver. And, uh, and then obviously the, uh, when you, the opener becomes a, a guard and you can put your, your pinky in here and it becomes a very secure knife to hold for whittling or for cutting rope, which I do a lot of. And it's got a, uh, a double hollow ground that, that rides really high up. So 
I just like this knife, you know, and it was like, it was like 12 bucks, you know, and you know, how can you, how can you beat a knife like this to keep around cutting rope, things like that? Um, I mean, you couldn't make this knife for that money, but I just thought it was pretty interesting with the gold accent and things like that. So that'll go into my future antique box. Okay, next up, uh, a couple people saw on Monday's video, the uh, uranium glass. They thought that was pretty interesting and they were asking about radioactivity. So uh, in order to answer that question, we got to go into the attic. If you've never been there before, you're in for a treat. So let's go upstairs into the attic and see about radioactivity. Okay, we're up here in the attic and here's where I keep a lot of my cool stuff this is kind of my man cave so to speak and in here there's all kinds of interesting things and things that i used to uh, bring up to the scouts and uh so let's go first get the geiger counter now you'll have to excuse me i don't have my uh my tripod up here so i'll try and hold this as steady as possible but over here what you see here is a civil defense geiger counter and uh the model here is a v700 you can see here now that little black dot on the side here is a, a way to test it there's a depleted uranium in there and that's how you could test it right now we have it uh turned on and uh when you take this little wand here and uh open it up and you can see by spinning this uh you can open up the little wand which exposes the geiger Mueller uh tube in there geiger and Mueller invented the uh, Geiger counter in the mid 1920s and uh, now if you place this against here and look at the meter you can see we do have it that's radioactive so it is working the batteries are good so let's check out and see if our uranium glass is indeed radioactive. Okay I have the uh, speaker from the uh, uh, the Geiger counter next to the phone so you should be able to hear it uh, but we're gonna first I'll put it over here to the uh, test subject to the uh, side and you could hear the, uh, that's the radiation, that's the counts per minute. Now we'll put it next to the uranium glass here. And you could see very little, trace, hardly any. Let me show you what some real radioactive stuff sounds okay, like. Okay, here's we're going to have some fun here. We have uh, the detector set up with some of the items that I have that are radioactive. There are a lot of things in common household use that's radioactive you didn't even know about. Uh, first, let's go to, this is called Fiesta Wear. And this was big in the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s. And what it is, it had uh, uranium was in the glaze of this Fiesta Wear. And here's a little piece of it here. And if I put this over here, you can hear it. Okay, and I'll put it over here next to the cup. And it registers on the meter. Now, we don't, we have it times 10. We don't have it at the lowest setting, but you can see how much it registers on the meter. So it's quite radioactive. Again, nothing that's going to harm you, but you can see the difference. Now, we're going to go over to some uranium ore. This is a regular uranium ore, and it's from Utah. And listen to here. What if, and you can see the reading on here. That's regular uranium ore. Okay, I'm starting to get a little woozy, so I, I gotta hurry up with this. <laughs> Don't be threat. Uh, there's a lot of background radiation that we absorb every day, so this is nothing. Uh, over here, this is called uh, uraninite, and it's from Scotland. And uh, you can see this little sample here. Now, watch what happens when we put it over here. Now, this comes from a vein that's, you see here, it says approximately 185 million years old, give or take 20 million years. And uh, listen to this here. Ready? And you can see we pin the meter. Now, if we put it, that's times 10. We'll put it times, this is counts per minute. And we're going to put it at uh, times 100. And so you can see that's quite radioactive. Again, the only way that this stuff is going to really hurt you is if you ingest it, inhale it, or get it into your body some way like that. But very interesting. And you can see our uranium glass is quite safe. So I hope you enjoyed that little episode of uh, radioactivity and uh, there's a lot to learn about, a lot to know. And uh, not to be worried, the uh, uranium glass is safe. So I hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye. People have got to know whether or not their president is a crook. Well, I'm not a crook.